Hi everyone, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld, thank you for joining me. This is episode 95 of Hockey on the Spot. Um, I apologize for doing this this late, I just got back to my apartment. Um, only two games last night, however, we got a lot of updates, so that's what this video is going to be mostly about. So let's get started, I want to make this as quick as possible. Starting with the Detroit Red Wings, the Detroit Red Wings, um... Of course, are shopping Jordan Tutu in the hopes of recalling Gustav Nyquist. Um, and the Columbus Blue Jackets are trying to move defenseman Nikita Nikitin in order to promote Tim Erickson. Um, there are several NHL teams that have NHL ready talent waiting in the American Hockey League but need to trade, make, need to make a trade to benefit for, from their services. So the Red Wings and the Blue Jackets are the prime examples of this. Um, Yesterday, or a couple days ago, Dallas Stars forward Valeri Nichushkin became the seventh 18-year-old to score in an NHL game this season. The last time seven 18-year-olds scored in one NHL season was in 1993-1994. Um, more on the Dallas Stars forward Ray Whitney, who is 41 years old, is the third player 41 or older to record a goal in the 2013-2014 in NHL season. Joining Anaheim Ducks forward Tamu Solani, who's 43, and New Jersey Devils forward Yarmir Yager, who's 41. This has only happened one other season in NHL history when five players 41 or older scored goals in 2003-2004. Detroit Red Wings forward Daniel Alfredson would become the fourth player to do so this year if he scores a goal after his December 11th birthday. Of course, New Jersey Devils goaltender Martin Brodeur who has three career goals, could also be added to the list if he manages to score this season, which would be rather interesting indeed. <laughs> the New Jersey Devils have placed forward Rostislav Olish on waivers, um, <coughs> and um, so he could actually be a solid selection for pickup for a team that needs depth. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. New York Rangers captain Ryan Callahan, who was out for seven games with a broken thumb, returned last night against the Anaheim Ducks. We will talk more about that later. Former Vancouver Canucks defenseman Cam Barker, who was selected third overall at the 2004 NHL entry draft, is close to signing with Bar Barris Astana of the KHL. Barker, who was selected just behind Alexander Ovechkin and Evgeny Malkin, has been mostly a disappointment during his time in the NHL. Um, a guy who was expected to be much uh, the next Dennis Potvin, pretty much. <laughs> Montreal Canadiens forward Daniel Briere is symptom free and skates with with the team, and skated with the team for the first time yesterday since suffering a concussion, which is great news. Now on to something about the Minnesota Wild. One of the most important questions for the Minnesota Wild this season was who was going to step up and become the club's number two center. It seems as if Michael Granlin, who was selected ninth overall in 2010, has claimed that spot with seven points in his last five games. The Phoenix Coyotes have signed Tyler Gaudette to a three-year entry-level deal, um, while Carolina Hurricanes defenseman Ryan Murphy has been fined the maximum of 2,213.68 2 Dollars for clipping New York Rangers forward Derek Dorsett on Saturday. <laughs> um, the Stanley Cup champion Chicago Blackhawks <laughs> visited the White House yesterday and President Barack Obama, um, as well as President Barack Obama, Obama, who is a Chicago native, says championships belong in Chicago. So to the Blackhawks, thank you for bringing it back home. <laughs> um, Tampa Bay Lightning goaltender Ben Bishop, who is six foot seven, with former Chicago Blackhawks goalie Darren Pang. Um, Darren Pang, of course, is five foot five. Would he be able to play in the NHL today? That is a big question indeed, and a really interesting one for sure. Colorado Avalanche forward Alex Tangay will miss at least two weeks with a knee injury, while Vancouver Canucks forward David Boot has been assigned to the American Hockey League's Utica, Utica Comets on a conditioning assignment, which means he's close to returning. <laughs> Chicago Blackhawks goaltender Corey Crawford got chirped by President Barack Obama yesterday, saying, We were originally going to let Corey Crawford say a few words, but we need to keep this event family-friendly. Um, you guys have been hanging out with Rahm Emanuel, Chicago mayor, too much. Um, 
you guys might remember that Chica Crawford dropped a few curses during the Hawk Stanley Cup parade this past year. Um, there is a rough transcript, but I am not going to go into it. Um, you guys could imagine what he said. Um, so, um, but yes, he is a guy who talks really dirty. The St. Louis Blues have placed forward Brendan Morrow on IR with an upper body injury. Um, Vancouver Canucks forward Mike Santorelli has been playing some great hockey in his hometown, posting 10 points in 16 games. He is close to having a breakout year. It is being rumored that Philadelphia Flyers defenseman Luke Shen is on the trade block, um, as well as New York Ranger defenseman Michael Delzato. <laughs> Anaheim Ducks goaltender Frederick Anderson is just the third active goaltender, along with Victor Faust and Dallas Stars goaltender Kari Lettinen to win each of his first four NHL games. This is also the first time the Ducks have led the NHL standings through 16 games since 2006-2007's 12-0-4 start en route to winning the Stanley Cup. Um, former New York Rangers goaltender Martin Biron, who retired this season, um, will make his NHL analysis debut on TSN tonight. Congratulations to him. Um... The New York media is reporting that Edmonton Oilers um, Kevin Lowe, General Manager Craig McTavish, and Mark Messier took in the Rangers game last night to evaluate talent that could head to Edmonton in a possible exchange for Nail Yakupov. It's believed that the Oilers are trying to acquire a top end defenseman a top end defenseman who might just be available in Michael Delzado. Uh, we'll talk more about the game. Um, in a second. Team Slovakia has released their jerseys for the Olympics in Sochi. Those stripes aren't stripes at all. They are the words to Slovakia's national anthem. Um, yes, these new uniforms have what look like stripes, but are actually the national anthem. They are very interesting looking uniforms. I don't, I don't really hate them, but I don't love them either. I think they are a little plain to be very honest, but I don't hate them. Um, I think I think um, having the um, anthem on the jersey is really cool. <laughs> Jason Arnett, a veteran of 18 NHL seasons and a Stanley Cup champion, has announced his retirement. Arnett is a 12-time 20-goal scorer, including three seasons where he scored over 30 goals. He played in 1,244 NHL games while scoring 417 goals, 521 assists, and 938 points, and recording a plus-minus of plus 81 and 1,242 penalty minutes. Arnott's career was highlighted by a Stanley Cup winning goal for the New Jersey Devils in double overtime in Game 6 of the 2000 Stanley Cup Finals against the Dallas Stars. Good luck to J Jason Arnott wherever he goes. The Columbus Blue Jackets have signed Josh Anderson to a three-year entry-level contract. Um, NHL player safety's Brendan Shanahan said this about the brawl between the Flyers and the Capitals the other night. I hate when Philadelphia Flyers goaltender Ray... I hate what Flyers goaltender Ray Emery did. I wouldn't like him if I were a teammate of his. I wouldn't like it if I were an opponent of his. And I think more important, if the rest of the caretakers of our game, the general managers, don't like it, it's important for us to say when a rule is not properly addressed in the rule book. And I don't think it is. My job is to follow the rules. Very well said. Boston Bruins forward Louis Erickson returns from a concussion tonight just in time to face his former team, the Dallas Stars and Tyler Sagan. This will be the first time that the teams face each other since the summer blockbuster trade that also saw Rich Rich Peverly and Riley Smith switch sides. Who will win tonight? That'll be a good question. Montreal Canadiens have made center David Darnay a healthy scratch tonight versus the St. Louis Blues, and Martin St. Pierre will make his Montreal Canadiens debut tonight, or his season debut. Um, <coughs> the Edmonton Oilers have, and Florida Panthers enter tonight on a five-game losing streak but something we'll have to give as they face each other tonight. Both teams are in dire need of a victory as they find themselves in the league basement again despite off-season optimism that could both be that both could be playoff contenders. Um, <coughs> details have emerged as to why the Avalanche, the Colorado Avalanche trade Steve Downey to the Philadelphia Flyers for Max Talbot. 
During training camp, Downey got mad at Captain Gabriel Landeskog for a trip during a scrimmage, so he drilled him and was unapologetic. It was at that moment the, that Avalanche brass, brass decided Downey would be moved. So that now all starts to make sense as to why he, he got moved. Um, and last... Um, and last but not least, a big surprising rumor about New Jersey Devils goaltender Martin Brodeur. Martin Brodeur not playing in a Devils jersey? That's right. If the Devils aren't in a playoff spot by, Mar by the March 5th trade deadline, Brodeur will waive his no-trade clause to go to a contender. Brodeur explains, I hope it will never happen, but if there is a situation that could be really fun for me and really good for the Devils, why not? It's not like I'm going to play 25 more years here. I'm not looking for that. I want to get back into the playoffs with this team and try to do something with this team. But for a little bit of time in the spring, nobody is going to remember it, really. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. In the future, you may never know, but I don't want to change teams. But if I want to play and I have so much respect for this organization and if they don't feel I'm the guy for them and they want to move on, if I still want to play, I have to look after myself. I don't see that happening, but I can't say no. Very interesting indeed. That is very, very interesting. And that is all the updates for today. Sorry there were so many. Now we can talk about the only two games from last night's action. Starting with the NBC Sports Network broadcast of last night, the Anaheim Ducks and the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden, a rematch from the game on October 10th in Anaheim where the Ducks gave the Rangers a 6-0 walloping. Rangers looking to extend their winning streak to four, and the Anaheim Ducks looking to become the number one team in the entire NHL, at least for now. It is the Anaheim Ducks who come up out on top against the New York Rangers once again by a final score of 2-1. to one. So not a walloping this time around, but another win, and the Ducks sweep the two-game series. Both teams would get a player back for last night's game. Ryan, Captain Ryan Callahan would return for the New York Rangers after missing seven games with a broken thumb, making his home debut this season. And for the Anaheim Ducks, they get defenseman Lucas Spiza back and just in time because Sammy Votanen would be out um, for Lucas Spiza. It would be his season debut overall, and he played a solid game with an assist as well as six hits and one block shot. <laughs> well, we'll talk more about that, but it is the Ducks coming out on top by a final score of 2-1. to one. For the Anaheim Ducks, their goal is being scored by Corey Perry, his ninth of the year, assisted by Dustin Penner, and again, Luca Spiza, who gets his first point of the year and his first game of the year. And then Kyle Palmieri, the, the man who was born in Smithtown, New York, but raised in New Jersey, a New York Rangers fan growing up, would score what was the eventual game winner in his fourth of the year, assisted by Francois Beauchemin. Very good, memorable goal for Kyle Palmieri to score in his debut in the New York area. <laughs> um, but for the Anaheim Ducks, though, um, they got outshot in the game. However, they did have some guys with a lot of shots on goal. Dustin Penner led the team with six shots on goal. Corey Perry would have five. Uh, Dustin Penner also led the game in shots on goal with six. Corey Perry had five, and Andrew Cogliano, who had a huge game defensively, had four. And how about hits? Lucas Spiza in his first game back, six hits. He's a guy who loves to do that. Five hits for Devontae smith pelly and four for Ben Lovejoy. And block shots, Cam Fowler. How about him? Six block shots, which is unbelievable. Frederick Anderson would get the start in goal for the Ducks. His first start since playing the his first start since playing the um, Columbus Blue Jackets. And again, he goes 4-0-0. One of three current NHL goaltenders to go to win their first four games. Victor Faust and Dallas Stars goalie Kari Letton in the other two. Anderson, without question, the number one star of the game. 32 saves on 33 shots, a 970 save percentage. I was at this game, by the way. What a game it was for sure, especially for Anderson. Congrats to the first star of the game. Corey Perry was the second star. 
and the New York native Kyle Palmieri was the third star. For the New York Rangers, their only goal of the game coming from defenseman Michael Delzato. He finally gets his first of the year, assisted by Carl Hagelin and Ryan Callahan. Callahan gets an also getting an assist in his first game back, his first assist of the season. He does have a couple goals this year, however, or three goals to be exact. Um, no multi-point scores for either side. Um, Rangers outshot the Ducks in the game. Brad Richards had five shots on goal to lead the team. Ryan McDonough would have four. As far as hits are concerned, Ryan Callahan, six hits. And Dan Girardi had five. Callahan and Spiza having very similar type games for sure. Henrik Lundqvist would get the start and goal for the Rangers, and the King actually played really star solid despite the loss. 23 saves and 25 shots, a 920 save percentage. Um, good statistics, but not good enough to get the win. Um, so congratulations to the Anaheim Ducks, and they are now the number one team in the NHL in points. Yes, they are actually ahead of teams like the Colorado Avalanche and the San Jose Sharks, at least for now. That definitely can and most likely will change with the way those two teams are playing this season. So congrats to the Anaheim Ducks on a huge win. <coughs> the other game from last night's action, the Detroit Red Wings and the Winnipeg Jets in Winnipeg. The Jets coming up with a huge win by a final score of 4-2. to two. Winnipeg goals being scored by Brian Little, his eighth of the year, assisted by Devin Setaguchi and Andrew Ladd. Then after the Red Wings took a 2-1 to one lead in the game, it was all Winnipeg. Michael, Michael Froelich would tie up the game with his third of the year, assisted by Mark Scheifele. Then the eventual game-winning goal would be scored by the former Nashville Predator, Matt Halischuk, who gets his first goal of the season and his first goal in a Winnipeg Jets uniform, assisted by Michael Froelich and Mark Scheifele. That third line played unbelievable last night. And then... The captain, Andrew Ladd, would put the game away, assisted by Devin Setaguchi and Brian Little. That line good as well. Everyone who scored for the Andrew Ladd, Brian Little, and Michael Froelich would all have a goal and an assist. And then Devin Setaguchi and Mark Scheifele would both have two assists. So those are the multi-point performers. Chris Thorburn, five minutes in penalties. He got a major in the game. Blake Wheeler would lead the team and the game with six shots on goal, as well as Zach Bogosian. He had six shots on goal as well. Ole Okunin, Andrew Ladd, and Michael Froelich each had four. Um, no standout stats as far as hits and block shots are concerned. Al Montoya got the start and goal for the Jets and was really good in the game. 26 saves and 28 shots and 929 save percentage. This being done without forward Evander Kane. The Jets were without Evander Kane. For the Detroit Red Wings, they are of course still without Johan Franzen um, and also without Michael Samuelson and Patrick Eves. Um, they did take a 2-1 lead in the game. Um, their go goals coming from Henrik Zetterberg, his eighth of the year, assisted by Pavel Datsuk and Kyle Quincy. And then the other goal of the game, the other Red Wing goal being scored by Danny DeKaiser, who get, gets his first NHL goal. Congratulations to him. And not only that, it was a short-handed goal assisted by Nicholas Cronwall and Stephen Weiss, his first assist of the season and his first assist in a Detroit Red Wings uniform. But Danny DeKaiser, first NHL goal, and it came short-handed. Congratulations to him. Um, Jordan Tutu also had five minutes in penalties. He got into a fight. Pavel Datsuk would lead the Red Wings with five shots on goal. Um, Justin Abdelkader led the team with four hits. And Brian Lashoff led the team with four block shots. Jimmy Howard got the start and goal. And despite giving up four goals, was actually pretty solid. He faced a lot of shots. 43 saves and 47 shots. A 915 save percentage. Um... So, good job by Jimmy Howard, but not a good job by the rest of the Red Wing team. Congratulations to the Winnipeg Jets on a big win last night. And that is it for the games from last night. And now, last but not least, we go to this day in hockey history from November 5th. From November 5th.
1973, um, November 5th, 1973, was the day that Russian native Alexei Yashin was born. He played for the Ottawa Senators and New York Islanders in the NHL. He had 12 goals. In 12 seasons, he had 337 goals and 444 assists. And in the playoffs, he had 11 goals and 16 assists. <laughs> he left the NHL in 2007, where he later played in the Continental Hockey League, or the KHL for short, for the Lokomotiv Yaroslavl. For, for Lokomotiv Yaroslavl, SKA St. Petersburg, and CSKE Mo Moskva with Russia. With Russia, Alexei Yashin won the Olympic silver medal in Nijano in 1998, and Olympic bronze medal in Salt Lake City of 2002. And a good, very good player in the NHL for many years, especially with the Ottawa Senators. And that is your famous hockey history moment. And that'll do it for episode 95 of Hockey on the Spot. Thank you guys for joining me. This has been Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. I will see you guys again tomorrow. Thank you, and have a great day.